My name's Lucy Crozier and this is your introduction to snowboarding and the Olympics. When snowboarding started way back in the 1900s, an old pieces of wooden barrel with rubber toe straps and pieces of it brought with it, with help from producers of the sport, an ethos to free your mind, brought from the relaxed sports of skateboarding and surfing. This view has been recreated subconsciously in many professional snowboarders, with Ed Lee, BBC presenter and ex-professional snowboarder, quoted as saying, To me, snowboarding is an expression of freedom, as well as professional snowboarder Travis Rice, quoted as saying, I would not even call snowboarding a sport. It's a way of life. It's a chance to shut your brain off and live in the moment. Attracting more and more participants as the years went by, snowboarders were infamously banned at many ski resorts for terrorising skiers. It wasn't until 1982 when the ski resort Suicide 6 in Vermont, USA became the first to actually allow snowboarders on their mountain. One resort opened a snowboard park specifically to separate skiers and snowboarders, which backfired encouraging more to take up the sport. 1983 played host to the first snowboarding championships, holding competitions in snowboard slalom. This boom in the sport led to the creation of the International Snowboarding Federation, or the ISF, in 1999, which fell through in 2002 to be taken over by the World Snowboard Federation, which to this day is a charitable national organisation representing snowboarding. Going further into the competition aspect of snowboarding, 1997 represented the world's first winter X Games, which highlighted snowboarding, evident by the 29,000 fans who attended. A year later, snowboarding finally made its Olympic debut, taking the events of giant slalom and halfpipe with it. A triumph for all, or is it? Many have reveled in being part of the legacy that is the Winter Olympics, having their sport on the largest stage in the world. But equally, there are many who protest their way of life being broadcast to the world as a means, under the very souls who threaten its upbringing skiing. In efforts to broadcast the new phenomenon to the world, snowboarding bid for its Olympic acceptance, a bid for inclusion which would become the centre of much controversy. Many snowboarders became upset when the International Olympic Committee, or the IOC, gave the jurisdiction of the event to the International Skiing Federation instead of the International Snowboarding Federation. The fact that the International Skiing Federation governed Olympic snowboarding became the major source of disappointment among many supporters of the sport, especially Terry Hackerson, professional snowboarder who famously boycotted the first Olympics, saying it goes against the soul of the sport. In snowboarding's purest form, rules are imposed by nature alone and the boundaries are self-imposed. To ride purely is to never reach the finishing line and never be judged. This podcast is released right at the time the IOC are deciding whether or not snowboarding should be allowed to introduce the discipline of slopes down into the 2014 Winter Olympics. There's been controversy over attendance by elite pro snowboarders at world-class events required by the IOC and at other world-class events scheduled to occur at the same time. Recognising snowboarding's place as a Premier Olympic event, Terje Hackerson asked snowboarders at riders meeting for the World Snowboard Event Arctic Challenge to take a stand and help ensure that if slope style is incorporated in the Olympics, it's done the right way. In interviews with directors of two major tours and what their thoughts were about the date clash, general manager of the Winter Dew Tour, Chris Prubilo, said, Yeah, we're concerned. Our top priority is always the athletes and to provide great courses and a schedule that works. However, FIS Snowboard Race Director Yui Bayer does not think that clashing dates will be a problem for getting the top athletes to compete at a world championship. We will always try and give riders as many chances as possible to attend as many events as possible, he says. There are different tours worldwide, so if riders can compete in as many as possible, it's the best way of promoting the sport. Snowboarding has made the most of being on the world stage and in the past few years has rocketed in popularity as a sport, taking the snowboarding ethos of friendship and freedom into disciplines like slopestyle and halfpipe and allowing expression and individuality to come through both on the mountain and in competition. Skiing has taken a leaf out of the ever so popular snowboarding book and introduced these disciplines to its competitions with recent success in ski halfpipe which is to feature at the 2014 Sochi Winter Olympics. With the International Skiing Federation advocating the inclusion of slopes down in 2014 and the inclusion of snowboarders to finalise the regulations of competition nudging, more are backing the bid and most importantly, more snowboarders are getting behind it, pushing the progression of snowboarding and its ethos of friendship worldwide. 
Thank you for listening to the first episode in the series on inclusion in the Olympic Games. Listen out for the next episode in the series focusing on baseball.